That's right, the somewhat kind of, but not really kind of, sort of, anticipated series for Willow has begun airing. It acts as a sequel to the 1988 film of the same title. Now, I've never seen the original myself, so I figured, you know, uh, I'd take a look at the trailer, see if it's worth a watch. A time for an unlikely hero named Willow. Tell her I'm not gonna let anything happen to the baby. We gotta get that baby to somebody. I'm somebody. <laughs> Well, that was upsetting. Uh, yeah, we better not watch that then. But uh, I will be watching the series though, so you don't have to. There was once international jubilation whenever Disney would announce their latest project. Children across the world would explode with excitement, but even the kids these days are getting a little bit sick of Disney. First they started dropping Tomato Town, and now they're dropping Disney. We've been seeing relentless blunders at the box office, shares hit a 20 year low, parks have been closing, people are getting fired, there's currently a hiring freeze, they got rid of Bob Chapek, they sacked him in the middle of the night and shipped him off to Zimbabwe on a Sunday evening. Great time for business. It's fair to say things are looking a little bit shaky for the big mouse. That's right, it would appear that they're trading in their title of best entertainers for a nice warm seat next to Amazon and their mediocre media machine. One day everything will be grey and taste of oatmeal. It's the truth. <laughs> As you can see, I made sure to get into a, a positive state of mind before watching this show because, you know, Disney aren't going to let me down, are they? And it starts the same way, well, Shrek does. Smash Mouth have done the soundtrack to this as well. Jokes aside, it starts with a recap, which is needed, uh, you know, especially after the Val Kilmer baby incident. You gotta get that baby to somebody. I'm somebody. In the same way that Blade Runner 2049 was set the same amount of time after the original as in the real world, this follows suit, and let me guess, everyone thought it was safe until an evil would reawaken. We thought the war was over, but soon after returning home, an ancient evil would rise again. Oh, for real? That's, that's what it is. That's... Uh, original? <laughs> oh no, it's Crimson Jesus from everyone's not favourite TV show, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The, the establishing shots of the show is, you know, the two girls going at it with swords. And, and look, I have no problem with women swinging around tempered steel. The problem I have is with this, I'm going to go ahead and call it a fetish at this point, that Hollywood have, with the idea that a woman can only be strong if she's physically strong or acts like a man. Yeah, well, don't beat yourself up about it. You know, there's skill and there's talent. And I just happen to have both. Now, I'm not saying that that's what this show is going to ram down our throats, Johnny Sin style, but it's looking like it might go that way. Yay, women. Boo, men. Boo, bad, bad men. And look, I know I'm supposed to be talking about Willow, but can we for a moment talk about the fact that Disney Plus, as an application, is utter garbage. If you got to rewind or fast forward, it is just useless. And God forbid, you rewind, realise you've not gone far back enough, try to rewind again, no, the app won't have it. If you try and rewind twice in a row, boom, it just crashes, will not have it, you have to exit out, click back in, click back on the show again, and try rewinding again. It's like there's an actual man on the other side manually rewinding and fast forwarding it for me whenever I press the button. I hate it. It's garbage. I mean, if you've heard some of the things they say about you, things I know aren't true. Some of them might be true, but that was before. That was before. I'm not that guy anymore. Eric, I love you. Okay, well, I don't want to make snap judgments about the show, but the dialogue is a bit stinky. I I'm going to go with stinky for now. If escalation is needed, we'll get there, but for now, I'll... I'll go with Stinky. And again, I don't want to rush to conclusions, but I'm not feeling particularly immersed in the world itself. 
it's not really selling it to me. It's a little bit more fragrance than fantasy. It looks like a, a Marc Jacobs commercial. Hey, and good news, it turns out I might be a real-life bigot because there's something about hearing American accents in a set that is made to look like, you know, medieval European. Like, I know this is fantasy, I know it's fiction, I know this is a parallel universe, it's not supposed to be based within reality at all, but the aesthetic is medieval European, and they've got American accents, and it just, it just, yeah, I don't know, it sounds weird. I'm not gonna break your heart. Please, Eric, you're gonna lose interest, and then you're gonna move on to the next, it's like, the one way you're totally consistent. No, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just a closeted American-phobe, or... What, was that a thing? Lachlan told me he found you and Jade atop the Canyon Maze again. You know I don't like you playing on those rocks. It's dangerous. Playing? Okay, unlike him, we actually were training. Oh, no, we're not going down this road, are we? You're a woman. You're, you can't do things. Well, at least I'm not like these incompetent men. I, okay, I know it's just started, but I'm, 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 forgive me. I'm deeply scarred by modern cinema. Is that the Basilisk? Hmm? Harry Potter? Hmm? J.K. Rowling? Ha! <laughs> Chamber of Secrets? Ha <laughs> ha! Celebrity is as celebrity does. Tomorrow Prince Graydon marries my daughter Kit. At last, unifying Tereslene and Galadun, ensuring us a harmonious future. Now, my clearly straight daughter is going to be marrying this little South Asian woman with a soul patch. Is there any questions? I'm not sure which one of them looks more like a lesbian, to be honest. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a Disney production without a good bit of moral ambiguity. So, the definitely straight princess and Crimson Jesus fancy each other. Uh, but Crimson Jesus isn't royal, but she's been accepted into some sort of legion where she's going to be fighting, she's going to be a knight and whatnot. So, she goes to tell the definitely straight princess, and she doesn't take it very well, and immediately starts taking it out on the prince who she's supposed to marry because she's not happy with the fact that it's a, an arranged marriage and they don't really know each other. So, like, she's expressing this, like, empowerment, this kind of like, oh, you know, I don't need no man kind of thing, whilst also, like, not allowing her friend to become a knight and do what she wants to do. So, while championing, you know, in, like, female empowerment for herself, she's squashing it for other females around her. Now some of you might say, oh Johnny, but that's just that's just the character, that's the way it's written, she's got flaws, she's like anyone else, you know, she has these imperfections and that's what makes her human, but th th there's a difference between writing, you know, flaws into your characters and, and just making them straight up dislikable and, and toxic. But hey, what do I know, I'm just a daft lad on the internet. Anyway, she then goes on to make everyone in the room feel very uncomfortable. This cocky young knight of Galadorn and this helmeted warrior from some far off distant land whose face no one had yet seen. And after a fierce battle, our mysterious stranger bested the knight and then removed his helmet. And can you guess who that was? Let me guess. Was it a woman? It's Princess Teramis secretly entered the tournament to fight for herself. Of course it was, yes, of course. <laughs> his face sums up exactly how I feel about this scene. And then the queen pulls the princess to one side to give her a bit of a talking to for making a scene, but of course we can't, you know, we can't make a female character look bad without also putting down a male character, so cue the scene where the queen is unnecessarily rude to the prince, who, funnily enough, is just trying to help the situation. I just spoke to Graydon, who's actually not such a terrible guy if you just get to know him. He's gonna talk to the king, smooth everything over, explain I think you should stick to chasing girls, rather than sticking your nose in matters that you're incapable of understanding and are not your concern. And it keeps going. This guy is, is, is still trying to be there for her, even though she's been a complete douche, and she still just throws it back in his face. I didn't ask for your help. No, but you're gonna get it anyway because you're my sister and I love you, despite your winning personality. Everybody loves you because you're so charming and fun. As long as they don't expect anything from you. I need to start watching television for kids. Then, the definitely straight princess wakes up Crimson Jesus to tell her that they're running away. If you were, you would understand that running away is- This isn't about marrying Greta. I'm looking for something. It's not here. That's out there. Beyond the barrier. Goodness, whoever saw that coming. And are we just gonna skip over the fact that she tried to stop Crimson Jesus, the supposed love of her life, she, she tried to stop her doing what she wants to do in life. 
We just we just gonna brush over that. Ah, oh, but it's okay because they're lesbians. Ah, oh! oh oh yeah. Okay, sorry, that's my bad. My bad. Oh, I didn't realize you were chill like that. The castle is then invaded by uh, an anthropomorphic borsack wielding a red stone torch and a rather large amputee with a basket on his head. Okay, this action scene is great and all, but can we have just one more scene of the prince looking completely incompetent, please? Woo, that was a good one. It really, it really hits differently the 34th time you see it. I saw a creature with huge gossamer wings rise out of the mist with someone in his talons thrashing around as it flew away they're seeing eric was kidnapped huh nice bit of uh, nice bit of double exposition there they they had a character like i mean exposition is lazy at the best of times but they had a character tell you what is happening and then immediately after that have another character tell you exactly what that character just told you just in case you forgot within the last few seconds Okay. And it might just be out of spite for the writers, because I can tell that the writers want you to dislike the incompetent prince, but funnily enough, he's the only character I remotely like so far. You've let your bride-to-be travel beyond the barrier without it's you. It's not ideal, but I've learned to live with it. Okay, so it's happened again. This show seems to have a problem with, like, dialogue not matching up. It feels like it's, like, been written sentence by sentence. So a character will be talking about something, They'll finish, and the other character will not address what they've just said and start a completely different conversation. Like, so have a listen to this bit. The queen is explaining to the princess about Willow's prophecy. She finishes, the, the princess doesn't address it, and starts a completely different conversation. Willow had a vision that one day that spirit would return and destroy Tara's lean. Last night, I saw it too. The last thing that Eric said to me was that he would never leave me. What? Who wrote this garbage? John Pegasus. Uh, okay, it was, it was more of a rhetorical question, but thank you, disembodied voice. Uh, John Bickerstaff, eh? Let's take a look at what this guy's done. Uh, oh, he's... Oh, he worked on Westworld. He worked on Westworld. Uh, I bet it's not season one, is it? Uh, he was a production assistant on season three. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Now, it might be that Tony Revolori is in one of my favorite films, which is The Grand Budapest Hotel, but I do genuinely find this character quite funny. Wait, you think we're gonna die? Wish someone told me I'm really scared of dying. That in communal bathing. So then they form a K-pop band in order to go out and rescue the prince who was kidnapped during the battle earlier on in the show. And as they're on their way, they believe they're being followed. It was the Muffin Girl. You're, hi you're hiding from the Muffin Girl. Not one of you could spot just a girl on a horse from more than three foot away. Okay. Anyway, she turns up and she's, everyone tells her go home. And she's like, no, nah, and she offers to be the cook for the group. Uh, because, <laughs> of course. And somebody's got a cook, right? Are you very good? I'm phenomenal. So much for those progressive values, eh? If you don't have a kitchen, bring a woman! Also, you know in films when, like, you see someone, usually like a farmer, he's got like a strand of, like, hay in his mouth. He's just they, they've put their own little spin on this and they've made a guy just straight up chew a stick. If you're thinking one member of this group stands out for some reason, there's just like, Hmm, why is there just one random old guy in this group? I sure hope he doesn't die. If you're not vigilant at each moment, I swear you will not survive. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, he just went and died. Ah, oh, I never saw that coming. Okay, but this guy though, that's just died, he supposedly like grew up with half of these characters. These characters have known him for like their whole life. He's protected their kingdom for however many decades. He dies in front of their eyes and not one of them bats an island. They don't even mention him again in the episode. They just, they just kind of go about their business. And then, and I am not joking when I say this, one of the most ridiculous scenes I've seen in modern television. They all ride off the edge of a cliff on horseback. Like a really weird quick cut happens and then they're just walking off and they're fine. <laughs> just fell 
like 50 foot into water that's shallow enough to walk in. The horses are fine, they're fine, and they're just going about their business. This is, this is stupid. And whoever edited this has severe ADHD. Look, I appreciate a show not beating about the bush and dragging stuff out, but the opposite is also true. This jumps about everywhere and like, just as you get settled into a scene and you're focused on what's going on, boom, it changes and it's like, oh, okay, I, I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so the princess that I was complaining about earlier has like a redemption arc, I guess you'd call it, and apologizes to the prince for the way she acted earlier on in the episode, which is great, except the fact it doesn't make sense because she's not like had anything to learn from. It's like what you had to, you had to fall off a cliff on horseback in order to learn not to be rude to people. All right then. And I'm not sure who this little man is, but uh, I like his gusto. You're Willow. Yep, that's me, Willow. But I'm out of the sorcery business now. I've retired, so you're gone. <laughs> God, I've got no idea what's going on, but it's funny. Anyway, then Willow actually finally shows up, and it's great to see uh, Warwick Davis, but they give him a pretty clumsy bit of exposition. Like, he shows up, he knows exactly what's going on, he tells everyone exactly what's going on, and we're just sat there like... Okay. My brother Eric was taken by... The Gales. The what? Your brother's alive. A prisoner of the Withered Crone, who dwells in Immemorial City that lies beyond the Shattered Sea. The four who came to tear is Lena, her servants. Then we find out that the Muffin Girl is important for some reason because she's got a, like a henna tattoo. You shouldn't be here. But it's so good to see you, Elora. I'm nobody. You are Elora Dannon, last blood of Chimeria, future Empress, High Priestess, Semprum Sorceress of the Nine Realms, and the world's last best hope against the evil coming to destroy us all what yeah my thoughts exactly uh okay to 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 sum this up then it's it's a bit of a stinker like uh okay i appreciate the fact it doesn't take itself too seriously obviously you know fantasy can sometimes you know be a bit too up its own ass but this it doesn't take itself too but apart from that it's it's, it's really not good. I, I I wouldn't recommend episode one. Maybe it gets better. I don't know. Maybe we'll take a look at episode two sometime. I'll have to decide. But uh, hey, there we go. And look, a lot of you probably think, oh, you know, but you, you like complaining about entertainment. The fact that entertainment's in a terrible place right now is good for you because, you know, it just means more content and more for you to complain about. And, and that's that's just that, that, that's just 100 percent correct. That, 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 that's right. That's so right. Just keep the garbage coming and I will c continue to consume the garbage. I'm the trash man. I come out, I throw trash all over, the, all over the ring. And then I start eating garbage. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And if you're in the market for a nice chair like mine, you can use my affiliate link down below and you'll be helping me out in the process. I will be... Very appreciative. Thank you very much. And as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Puzzlemon, Flunky, Jax, and Brennus. If you're in episode two of Willow, I'll definitely check it out. Tier two members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Musky, Saeed, MG Virgil, Kuno Sako, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Hadziu, Michael Terpia, and we're welcoming the wonderful Yarn Witch to tier two. Thank you very much for upgrading your membership on the channel Yarn Witch. It's been great to have you here these last couple of months. You've been great. And also a big thank you to the tier one members and uh, the patrons as well. I couldn't do it without you guys, man. Thank you once again for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And there we go. Another day, another video. Hopefully you can join me for my next one. But until then, make sure you take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you real soon.